Buenos dias, folks. Spencer here, back with another episode of Stop Loss with Spencer. Today, we're discussing lasers 2.0. And not only is it 2.0 because there's more information, but there's also two lasers. OK, so we, we did a previous video on lasers. I talked about what they are, kind of how they work, the moving parts. But now we're going to dive deep into examples of lasers, the types of lasers, and maybe some mitigation strategies that you yourself can deploy in order to counteract, offset, reduce, or hopefully eliminate uh, the need for a laser. So when we're talking about lasers, we're talking about bigger conditions, right? If you go to Sun Life or ATC and get their you know, benchmark or claim, high cost claims reports, you'll see that there's some common conditions that are driving these lasers. Cancers, leukemia, ESRD, um, hemophilia, uh, congenital, anomaly, con congenital anomalies, if I could speak, uh, you know, or also complications of pregnancy, which would be preemie, preemie babies, and transplants, septicemia, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very likely, you know, if 80 plus percent of stop loss policies have a, uh, a claim that hits, a reimbursement that will uh, happen in any given year, then it's very likely that you're also going to run into a laser at some point on one of your groups. So what do we do? What types of lasers? What are some examples? How do we counteract them? Let's go. Okay. So the one that everybody probably is familiar with, especially if you watch my previous stop loss video, is your straightforward standard laser. And what do I mean by that? Just a separate dollar amount, a higher dollar amount than the deductible that's currently being quoted for an individual or multiple individuals based on you know, some ongoing conditions that they have, and they will just assess a singular dollar amount for that individual, regardless if it is necessarily a claim that's related to something specific or is it uh, you know, a culmination of many different conditions or treatments that that person is having, they're going to have a set dollar amount. Okay, So what do we do? Well, first and foremost, I'd always ask the question, is this person on COBRA? Have they been on COBRA? Is COBRA about to run out for the coming year? Or are they eligible for Medicare for the instance, maybe a condition like ESRD where they're getting dialysis treatment and have been for a long period of time? You know, could they be Medicare eligible, even if they're old enough as well to be on Medicare? What would you do? Maybe uh, engage a dialysis management program, like something like specialty care management that has a, a flat case rate that's you know, trying to attack the actual treatment costs themselves and not necessarily what's negotiated based on that uh, PPO arrangement and that network and that administrator. Perhaps there's a, a way to source um, those dialysis treatments in an alternate payment model, more of a flat case rate, something like that. Um, and then all you'd really need is like an amendment to the plan document, I believe, in order to do that. So if you have somebody on dialysis, maybe that's an option, a dialysis management program specifically could always negotiate with the carrier. Let's say you have 150K spec and they're adding a $250,000 laser. Well, maybe there's enough room in that case for them to offset it, lower that laser, or maybe there's even enough room to potentially eliminate it altogether. So negotiate. Last but not least, ag specs. You know I'm a big fan of those. Again, maybe that threshold is close enough where if you add a 50 or $100,000 ag spec, then maybe that carrier would be willing to drop the laser altogether. The next type of laser is a limited contract basis. And what that means is you might have a 2412 or a 3612 that's being quoted for everybody else, but the carrier might say, you know what, for this particular person, and I'm adding a 1212 uh, limitation. So we are not, we're basically, we're not covering any of the run in claims that might happen. So, what is an example of this? Again, going back to the preemie baby example that I, I referenced earlier, maybe you have a preemie baby that was born on November 15th. Well, depending on how quickly that ASO is going to adjudicate, process those claims, you might have some claims that are running into the next policy period. So what would you do? Well, if there's a quoting carrier trying to take over the business, they're probably, especially since preemie babies can be millions of dollars potentially, depending on how, how long they're in the NICU, um, they may say, you know what, we're not taking any of that run in. So you really, as a broker, need to make sure that you're pushing the current administrator to process those claims as quickly as possible, because they should be obviously applying to that current contract year. Um, so th this is one of those things, it's not necessarily a mitigation strategy, but if that person is already um, you know, over the spec or the preemie baby's already been incurring claims and breached the spec, but you're just worried about run-in claims not being picked up by the next carrier, then make sure you're pushing the administrator to get them paid in a timely manner. You could also discuss with the carrier the potential of just absorbing that cost. Uh, about 10 to 20% of premium, depending on the carrier, 
could be allocated to absorb known risk, saying, yeah, we're going to gamble. We know this is a risk for the coming year, but we've got enough premium in the case that I can set aside 10, 15, 20% to cover that person without a laser. So that's also an option. It's an option to have as a discussion point for any one of these instances. Um, but just for this particular instance, when you're talking about run-in claims that are maybe the tail end of something that happened in the previous year, maybe there's not a ton of exposure realistically, and they could absorb that. The next type of laser is a contingent laser. So contingent means we will assess a laser if and only if a certain set of treatments happen. So for instance, you know, I, I use the example of a transplant. So this individual is maybe on a transplant waiting list or maybe they're a candidate for a transplant at some point in the future. And we're only going to assess a laser if that person has a transplant and treatment related to the aftercare of that transplant. So, that's a, a contingent laser. I had to separate it because it didn't all fit in the box. But what would you do in a contingent uh, laser instance? Well, one, you'd really be focused on, since there's a certain set of criteria that have to be met, a very isolated condition, then maybe you're looking at cost containment or prevention programs to keep that person from actually getting a transplant. Or maybe you can delay the need for that transplant for a couple years down the road, and maybe there's even a fully insured transplant policy that you could buy, assuming that um, there's not some exclusions that that carrier would assess for that individual. There's all sorts of things you can do to keep that from happening, and that's where I really focus on the mitigation, the front end prevention. Really, all of these, again, you'd want to focus on focus on prevention, excuse me, but maybe in this one, since again, there, there's only a narrow window of when that uh, laser would apply, so why don't we try to keep it from happening, right? The other thing is you could, you could gamble. About 50 to 60% of lasers actually happen, depending on the carrier, depending on their block. So realistically, especially when you narrow that uh, criteria even further, there's a reduced likelihood that that's going to come into play. So you could always potentially gamble on it and just say, you know what, we're going to take it. And last but not least for that instance, and again, all instances, is nurse consultants. The carriers have them. You might have some in-house. You might be able to engage a third-party nurse consultant, utilize their expertise and their own um, maybe third-party assessment of what's going on to say, you know what? We don't think that's going to happen. You know, there's only a 20% likelihood they're going to have a transplant this year. Or maybe that transplant number is, is too high. Maybe that realistically that transplant only costs 200 grand on average. So use them as uh, you know, somebody on your team to go to bat for you and have a leg to stand on for negotiation. And last but not least, the, uh, the fourth type of laser is an exclusion altogether. That is a total exclusion. There's no dollar amount set aside. That person is simply not covered under the stop loss policy. So that might happen in the instance of, let's say you have a hemophiliac that has ongoing regular medication for their life, it's very expensive, maybe there's a low spec for the rest of the plan, maybe it's a very small employer as well, and there's realistically nothing the carrier can do to ever write that business profitably if they have to cover this person. Maybe you'll accept a $750 or $800,000 laser, that could also happen, but really in the instance that I'm describing, it's probably going to be a total exclusion altogether. So you could either find alternate medication if it does exist. Um, you're limited in this condition, uh, for instance, but there might be alternative, hopefully cheaper medication that's out there. There also could be alternate sources of the medication, whether it's you know, sourcing the script from another country, whether it's tourism, uh, having that person actually go to another country to get their maintenance medication on a regular basis. Maybe they can get a three month supply and go once a quarter down to the Bahamas or something like that and make a little vacation out of it. But there's also sourcing methods, there's even government programs out there to potentially cover specialty medications or gene therapies that are very expensive. You know, that's out there. I don't know where to tell you to go, but I do know it's an option. And also alternate coverage. You know, you don't want to coerce somebody off the plan. You don't want to persuade them to do something else. But if it is an option, if it's better for that individual, if it's within compliance, if it's, it's you know, appropriate under uh, the existing law, then you could also potentially have them go to another plan. So, four types of lasers, four examples of those types of lasers, and what to do with each one of them. Thanks for tuning in. Stop Loss of Spencer, episode 21 in the book, Lasers 2.0. See ya.